But anyway, our friend Patrick J. Buchanan is with us. He has a great column out about this. Will Russiagate end up backfiring on the left? You know, Pat, more and more, especially because of the reporting of Sarah Carter and John Solomon, I mean, these are two veteran investigative reporters. They're not part of our right-wing conspiracy, you know. And also, Devin Nunez's revelation, it proves, I think, Trump was, there's no doubt at this point in my mind at all, that he was surveilled, and surveilled pretty intensely. Well, that's, you know, that's my belief and, and uh, my suspicion and belief because of what uh, Chairman Nunez has said. We have been told, John, that in the course of legitimate uh, intelligence surveillance, Trump people's names and Trump people's conversations were picked up. They, it looks as though they were transcribed, and then they were spread through all the intel agencies, unmasking the individuals. And subsequent to that, all these leaks come out from intelligence sources about what the Trump people were saying and doing. And it looks like a series of crimes have been committed in there. First, the unmasking. Secondly, the leak, for example, the leak that brought down General Flynn. That's a de facto felony. And the key question is, is the FBI investigating these leaks, some of which may be coming out of the FBI, because here you've got real crimes, whereas as yet, after eight months, we've got uh, Clapper, uh, DNI Clapper, and the head of Morrell, the head of the uh, CIA, saying we haven't found any connections. Well, it's, it's, it's Clapper, and also, well, you know, when you, I can play it, but the same thing was said about Comey, and the same thing was, there's no evidence. At all. Well, they got no, I haven't got a link, and, and the three suspects, so to speak, are Roger Stone, Paul Manafort, and Cardinal Page. They've all said, look, we'll testify publicly about any connections with the Russians. In addition to that, Sean, I can't figure out what the crime would be. I mean, Robert, President Trump, as candidate Trump said, hey, Vlad, put out those 30,000 emails if you got them. I mean, maybe that's collusion. Was that a crime? Of course not. Listen, I mean, he, he was, I think he was doing it just to put pressure on Hillary, which was a smart thing to do. It was a joke. <laughs> if, frankly, you know, people don't get how funny he is, but um, the, the more important issue here is what we're discovering and what the media is not reporting. And the, and the big story is, for eight long months, Pat, I call it the alt-left propaganda destroyed Trump media they just want to destroy this man. How do you how do you sustain a story for eight long months in the media without one shred of evidence? Well, the reason they're doing this, with due respect, is why has the FBI taken eight months to learn whether or not, I mean, Paul Manafort or Roger Stone or this other fellow talked to the Russians and did something wrong? Have they been brought in by the FBI? Have the grand jury been impaneled? I mean, why does it take eight months to learn a simple fact like that. And the reason all these people can get away every day with saying the Russian connection and is Putin running the American government and did he elect uh, Donald Trump and all the rest of it is because the FBI is sitting there under Comey and won't clear the air on these things. What you... They really ought to be given a deadline and told, look, fish are cut bait. Well, they should be, but, you know, I, don't, I can't figure Comey out for the life of me. I mean, Comey is, seems to have just been politicized, and he's like, he seems like he's twisted in pretzels about everything that he's doing and doesn't know, he can't make decisions. It's, you know, from what I understand, it's almost impossible to get rid of this guy. What, well, would, what would be so bad if Trump said, you know what, you're not doing a good job, get out of here? Well, you know, I think, and I don't know whether the attorney general can do it, but I think you call him in and say, look, you're going to have to, I mean, let me know what you've got. And you've got to bring this to some conclusion because you're, you've not only put a cloud over the, the election of the President of the United States, leaks are coming out left and right from what look like uh, illicit activities on the part of investigators to damage the Trump administration and to sabotage it. And it looks like, quite frankly, that the, the, either the Attorney General authorized the distribution of this unmasked material, or maybe the President did. Are you going to look into that as well? I, I think what we get to the bottom of this and where this is now headed in my mind is that somebody very high up in the intelligence community is going to be found responsible for leaking this information. Now, then it raises questions about who knew what, when, and where. 
And how high up did it go? Did the president know? You know, were they using, for example, legitimate surveillance of foreign entities as a ruse to really surveil Donald Trump? Well, exactly. And, and, and did they pick up this and they say, aha, uh, you know, let's just transcribe this and then unmask the individual or have it obvious who the individual is and then spread it through the intel committees or community and then but it, when it leaks that amounts to a real solid felony there and all these intelligence mark levin reported on all those you know intelligence sources said this that and the other all of those are leaks which appear to me to be crimes by the that's way you're talking about levin felonies. that's mark levin the great one we call him there at right? <laughs> come on give the guy his due <laughs> um he's a buddy of mine um yeah right? look he he did a great job in terms of outlining the timeline i think this was total vindication too for trump now the media will say well he said that obama wiretapped him well pat you tell me what's the difference difference between wiretapping and surveilling is there much of a difference well it's exactly I mean if you took the specific exact verbiage and said well that wasn't ordered a FISA court would have to order it but we have not heard from Attorney General Loretta Lynch or the President of the United States and the simple question would be are you aware of any uh, surveillance that was done about the Trump people their connections with the Russians and did you authorize it? Did anybody bring to you that information? Because, look, if I were Comey, and I've got this, in, you know, I, I see all this Trump stuff in Trump Tower, and there are guys, say, Flynn talking to the Russian ambassador. You know, before I move that around or move further in that, I go to the attorney general and say, look, we've got something here, and we're going to pursue it, and I think you ought to know it. And so the Attorney General and the President, I think, would have to sign off on that. Because can you imagine, suppose they were caught, FBI surveying uh, uh, Trump. Well, Trump. according to John... And the President uh, didn't know it? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't believe that in any way, shape, matter, or form. Now, there was one FISA warrant, John Solomon and Sarah Carter reported, that was given just before the election in October. But there was also a separate warrant, and neither one was really specifically against Trump, but on an ancillary level, they did actually surveil Trump Tower's server. Yeah, now, and the, also they they surveyed, you know, all these Russian contacts, all right. these which are legitimate, and if these individuals mentioned what, something about Trump and his people, or they talked to Trump people, this automatically is picked up, and the, name, the conversation and the names of the Americans are supposed to be masked. Yeah, well, what about John Podesta's contact? If they unmask him, that's Listen, a serious problem. I, we already know a bigger crime. And what about John Podesta's connections to the Russians during the campaign? Number one. Number two, look at this whole Uranium One fiasco. While, while Bill Clinton, you know, Hillary Clinton's Secretary of State, he's giving speeches in Russia, getting paid twice what he normally gets paid. <laughs> he gets, they get, to, for the Clinton Foundation, hundreds, you know, literally millions and millions of dollars sent to the Clinton Foundation, Hillary herself has to sign off on the Uranium One deal where Russia literally controls 20% of American uranium. Well, exactly. All of these things were, were revealed. But the question is, who will investigate the investigators? I mean, it's, I saw, I think it was in the Post this morning or one of the papers, they said, look at these, these they're trying to divert the attention away from the Russia connection to the to the WikiLeaks and to the uh, to the uh, uh, getting into the DNC and Podesta files to this other thing. But look, I'm not against doing that, going into the Russian connection if it's there. But after eight months of investigating and you've turned up, you can't even right. say who talked to who. It's ridiculous. All right, Pat, stay right there. I want to ask you about health care and the the rest of the Trump agenda when we get back. All right, as we continue, Patrick J. Buchanan is our guest. All right, so they didn't have the votes for health care. A lot of people slamming the Freedom Caucus. Here's my take, Pat. I don't like the way they rolled out this bill. They kept it secret. Everyone kept complaining. They heard this was in it, that was in it. They're fighting on TV before it ever gets released, but nobody in Congress saw it. And then there, there's all this intramural fighting after it's released. 
wouldn't it have been better to build the coalition of all the disparate groups within Congress and the Republican Party and, and agree to a bill before you actually bring the bill out and then have people publicly fighting on TV and then ultimately not having the votes for, for it to pass? You know, undeniable. You should have had all the ducks in a row, or you don't roll this thing out. And I, you know, I'm inclined to agree with you on this that the the freedom, as I'm writing tomorrow in the lead, I said, the, did the Freedom Caucus pull the Republican Party back off the ledge before it jumped to its death? You know, with that bill. Now, if the bill had passed there, everybody would be on the line. It would go to a Senate where it faces even greater opposition. And then it, if, if, if it went down to the White House and the president signed it, they're saying 14 million people would be dropped off the health care rolls. And, it, you know, in addition to that, all manner of things would take place. And only 17 percent of the people wanted the bill. So in a way, they, they really didn't get it all together. There's no way to defend a failure like that. But I'm not sure full blame can go on the on the Freedom Caucus. I mean, they were doing what they believe was right, although this now is, is the situation. Look, the, the, Donald Trump, one of the great things he had going for him, and I talked to people who did disagree with him and dislike what he had said, didn't like him personally. But what they said about him, he said, you know, the guy gets things done, whether it's at, you know, skating rink and center. Park or the buildings go up, he gets things done, and that's what's needed. And that brought him through an awful lot. And what is perceived now, I'm afraid, is that this was a you know debacle. This was a debacle. But I don't think it was Trump's debacle. House. I think it was. I, listen, for eight years, these people, meaning Congress, have been saying they're going to repeal and replace Obamacare. In eight years, you can't build a consensus bill. Exactly. What? Where is the legislation? I mean, if they couldn't, you know, where was the legislation? You ought to be able. To, to roll that right on through, get all your people in order. I mean, and, and so there's no defending, there's no defending that, that they, they I mean, when, when you get something right to the end and you're ready to go, then you have to pull it back like that. It's like climbing down off the high dive. All right, Pat Buchanan, appreciate it as always. We'll have you back soon. We appreciate uh, your insight.